Hello class, Mr. Linder here. In this video, I want to share with you guys BMR determination using respirometry of a mouse. So in the beginning of this experiment, there's three things you're going to need to know in order to do your calculation for BMR. The first thing you need to know is the weight of your mouse. Uh, which you get by actually weighing an empty chamber and then placing the mouse inside of the chamber, weighing the chamber and the mouse together, uh, and then subtracting the difference. And so that's the way we get the weight of the mouse. The second thing you need to know is the barometric pressure of the room that you're doing the experiment in and the room temperature that you're doing the experiment in. And those are used to correct for temperature and pressure differences uh, for the gases involved in the experiment. Then you're going to run the experiment and you're actually going to record the oxygen consumption time for your mouse within a chamber. And so I already have the three trials listed for you here. This is the data that you collect when you're actually running the experiment. But how does this experiment actually work? So what you're going to do with this particular experiment is you have your metabolic chamber. And what we really need to know is how long it takes the mouse to consume one milliliter of oxygen. So this is what the chamber looks like. And inside of the chamber, you're going to have your mouse. So we'll draw a little mouse here. And we'll put a little tail here so you know it's a little animal in there. And you can add a little eye if you want. You can have a little smiley face, okay? So this is our mouse uh, inside of the chamber. Along with the mouse, we are going to have a straw placed in there. And that straw is actually going to have holes in it. And inside of the straw is going to be something called potassium hydroxide. So we'll call it KOH pellets. And those are going to be important, as I'll explain in just a little bit. But those KOH pellets are going to be found inside of this straw that has the holes poked in it. Okay, and so they're all inside of this straw here. So that's the potassium hydroxide. Attached to the chamber is a pipette. And that pipette is going to tell us one milliliter of oxygen consumption. Now, how is it gonna tell us one milliliter of oxygen consumption? Well, let's talk a little bit about okay, what we know in terms of the atmosphere and the gases inside of the respiratory chamber. So out in the atmosphere, we know that we have a certain amount of pressure, and that atmospheric pressure is because of nitrogen, gas, that's the most abundant gas in the atmosphere, oxygen, gas, and then other gases. So we'll say carbon dioxide, and, and you could even include water vapor and things of that nature. Okay. So outside of the chamber is atmosphere. Inside of the chamber is also atmosphere. So inside of the chamber, there's oxygen, nitrogen, okay, and carbon dioxide. So nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, okay. In order for this experiment to work, we need to be able to measure the oxygen consumption of the mouse. Well, let's take a look at what's happening. In order for the mouse to stay alive inside of the chamber, it's going to have to take in oxygen, okay, that's located within this sealed chamber. So it's taking in oxygen. As the mouse utilizes the oxygen to produce ATP and stay alive, so as it's performing essentially basal metabolic respiration, BMR, okay, to produce ATP, it's going to produce carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct. And so that carbon dioxide is going to be exhaled from the mouse. So we're seeing a decrease in oxygen, but an increase in carbon dioxide within the chamber. If we're replacing one gas with another gas, we're not going to see much of a pressure change inside of the chamber. And that's going to make it difficult for us to actually measure oxygen consumption. 
because the way we're going to measure oxygen consumption is we're going to place a bubble, a soap bubble, at the end of the pipette. And we need that soap bubble to move along the pipette in order to calculate the time it takes for the mouse to consume one milliliter of oxygen. But we can't get that bubble to move unless the pressure outside the chamber is greater than the pressure inside the chamber. So the pressure outside needs to be greater than the pressure inside. So the pressure would be dropping if the mouse took in oxygen and didn't exhale carbon dioxide because as the oxygen decreased, the pressure would decrease. But since the mouse is exhaling carbon dioxide, we're not seeing much of a pressure change. So that's where the potassium hydroxide pellets come into play. As the mouse exhales carbon dioxide, those CO2 molecules enter the holes through the straw and they interact with the potassium hydroxide. So we have potassium hydroxide interacting with the carbon dioxide gas. And when that happens, that reduces the CO2 inside the chamber. So carbon dioxide levels go down. Also, oxygen levels are going down because the mouse is taking in the oxygen to use for ATP production. So if oxygen levels are declining and the carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the potassium hydroxide pellets, then the overall pressure inside of the chamber goes down. And that means that the pressure outside the chamber will be greater than the pressure inside the chamber and that will actually cause this soap bubble to move down the pipette. And so what we can do is we can time how long it takes for the soap bubble to move from the end of the pipette down to the chamber. And that'll tell us the time it takes for one milliliter of oxygen consumption. And so what we do with that information is first we figure out the time, okay, one trial, and then we run this again, a second trial and a third trial. And this will then allow us to average out, okay, we can add up these numbers okay, and divide by three, and that will allow us to average out the time it takes for the mouse to consume one milliliter of oxygen. And if we know how long it takes for the mouse to consume a milliliter of oxygen, then we can perform a mathematical calculation. So we can do a series of calculations in order to determine the overall BMR of the mouse. Or essentially, we can figure out the calories per hour for this individual mouse using this concept of respirometry. So utilizing oxygen consumption, we can eventually figure out calories per hour. So I, what I want you guys to do is watch the video for the live experiment, the mouse inside the chamber and the bubble moving along uh, the pipette. And then I want you to take your data for the time that it takes to consume one milliliter of oxygen. And I want you to perform the mathematical calculations that allow you to determine calories per hour for your mouse. And then once you have that information, you can answer the review questions and finish up your laboratory report. I hope this helps. Take care. Bye.